We've got a case here that, that you'll see where these horses tend to, when they fracture a tooth, what we're always trying to determine is um, if the fracture is so bad that the tooth needs to be extracted or if it's something that we can save. Not every fracture means that there's going to be a root abscess or an infection of the tooth and that needs to be extracted. That really depends on the horse's age which tooth is affected and then what goes on within the tooth. Sometimes they have the ability to seal themselves off and the tooth can be fine. And so uh, where it gets really challenging sometimes is you'll have a horse that has multiple fractures and we're trying to determine what's the best course of action for that individual. So we've got a case here that we're gonna show you guys that, that is kind of complex and that we have to factor in a lot of things to try and make the best decision for, for him. So let's look in the mouth. So here when we look in the mouth, we can see over on his lower right side that the, the teeth are actually kind of white or light yellow. And then if we come over to this side, you can see how they're a little bit darker yellow. Let me step back out a little bit so you can kind of compare and contrast both. So if you look on the one side versus the other here, let me try and put a pointer in there. So if you look right at this part of the tooth right here, this is a light yellow, and then you can see that this one's darker. The other thing that we can see is we have, sorry, we got a little motion here, and it's a little hard to focus, but we've got right in here where I'm pointing, we have calculus and tartar, if we come to the other side, we don't have that, okay? So this is telling us a story that this horse is chewing on his lower right side and upper more than on the, the left side. Why might that be? Well, let's look in the back of the mouth right here. Look what happened. See this tooth, how it's not really in line with the other ones? Hang on, our focus is having trouble. Oh, look what happens. We have a deep fragment that is broken. Right here we can see how that moves. So just without even seeing the fracture, we can tell that this horse is painful and he's telling us that by not chewing over here. Okay, so this is the lower right side, the side that he has been chewing on. We're going back here. We can also tell he's been chewing because we can see a little bit of carrot in here. So that tells us that's not a coincidence. Um, we can see some little cuts along the tongue. We have a fissure here on this tooth, but that's not probably painful. Let me clean that off. Now, here we have a, a broken tooth, the 409. And we have an open pulp here, number one. Open pulp number two, some granulation tissue. And then the rest is pretty normal. If we come to the other side, here we can see where we have that calculus right here and tartar, so he's not chewing there. And we come back a little bit. Here's a piece that's broken. Look at that. We can move that with my finger. We can see the food packing in here. And then if we look a little bit lower, we have a little drain track right here where we have that little dot that's where pus is draining out this is also some pus right here we can see on the gingival margin there's a little bit of pus here we have a chip fracture pulp number one is okay so this is an example of a fracture that actually is not a problem because we can see that the pulp is sealed off so uh, this type of fracture is not a big problem and then look we have more calculus on the back of this tooth. So we have this consistent pattern of not chewing on this side because this tooth is painful. So now let's go ahead and we have to complete the story by looking at radiographs. So this is a radiograph of the lower right side. This is the number eight tooth, so that's the tooth that's in front of the fractured one. And this line right here that we have going down, this black line, that's the periodontal space, and we want to see and make sure that that's very nice and uniform, which it is here, all the way down. This is exactly how it should look. If we look on this side, we can see where that periodontal space is widened. Okay, so that's, that's abnormal and suggests that we're, we've got some periodontitis and some infection in this area. 
Here you can see a nice looking normal one again on these roots for comparison. So now we have ra radiographic signs and oral evidence that the lower right um, side is bad, which is a tooth number 409. And so what we're going to do is extract this tooth because we have multiple things pointing at the fact that it's got an, uh, an infection. This is a different view. We often shoot multiple different types of, of radiographic views to confirm what we're thinking. So here we have this nice periodontal space again. You can see it on these teeth right here. And then looking here on the tooth in question, we can see how that periodontal space is widened and we have periodontitis. Now we're gonna look at the left side and the tooth we're worried about on the left side is the number eight. This is, remember, the side that the horse is not chewing on uh, but if we look, look at that radiographic line right here, the periodontal space actually looks really nice and healthy on this tooth. Okay, and then this is another view of the left side, and the periodontal area looks really healthy and really healthy, maybe a little bit unhealthy up top, but it's not all the way down. So this is, this is interesting. So this is a great case that has a lot going on. Uh, the left side, no chewing. We have a sagittal fracture on the number eight tooth, and we have calculus. The right side, he is chewing on, but we have a fractured lower nine that has radiographic evidence of periodontitis, and it has two open pulps when we look orally, and then we can see a lot of gingivitis. So um, the question is, what do we do now? Well, we're going to do a, a few things. We're going to extract the 409, which is infected, and the uh, 308, we're actually going to leave and monitor because we're going to take out the fragment that's painful, and then what we're going to do is we're going to send him home and we'll monitor him, and we'll see if he's chewing on both sides in the future. We might do a recheck in, in four to six weeks or something like that, and we'll see if he's chewing on his left side, and in a few months, we can always radiographically reevaluate the, the 308 and check on it. But when teeth fr break off like that, you can sometimes, occasionally, the tooth within itself, the pulp can seal off, and it doesn't mean that the, that the tooth is going to have to come out. Now, eventually, maybe it will, but today, there's nothing that suggests that the 308 has to be extracted. So that's before we extract any teeth, for me, it's very important that we have... Um, that our radiographic signs match up with our clinical signs, match up with what we're seeing on our oral exam. Everything has to fit, and if something doesn't fit together, then it's not the right choice to do an extraction. We need to get, gather more data. Too often I see people jump to a conclusion to, to do an extraction based purely on radiographs, um, and that can be very deceptive because sometimes you can find uh, just you can have incidental findings on a radiograph that are not um, that don't connect with what you see in the mouth or the the clinical um, history of the horse. So you want to put it all together like a puzzle, and then hopefully uh, you can do the right thing by the horse. Mm -hmm.